In reaction to the then rising crime rates, uh, Congress and the states uh, imposed all sorts of very uh, severe penalties, mandatory minimums of 5, 10, 15, 20, in some cases even more years. And for these and other reasons, as these laws came into place, there was a tremendous penalty uh, attached to going to trial. You would get a much more severe sentence if you uh, went to trial than if you pled guilty, particularly if you could negotiate a plea to a lesser offense or something of that sort. And the statistics are really quite striking. Starting uh, in the uh, uh, mid 80s and continuing to right down to the present, instead of 15 to 20 percent of all cases uh, going, uh, all criminal cases going to trial, uh, it quickly declined to something like 3 percent. Um, and that's where it remains to this day. Um, and a certain portion of that are people who are actually factually innocent, who decide to plead guilty because they simply can't take the risk that if they go to trial and are convicted, they will be facing 10, 15, 20 or more years uh, with devastating effects on themselves and their families. And so they prefer, even though they're innocent, to take a plea that might result in a prison term of one or two or even five years rather than assume the risk. This is not a, a, a speculation. This is a proven fact. Uh, and the Innocence Project uh, has provided part of the proof uh, of the uh, more than 300 people who the Innocence Project has shown uh, were factually innocent and whose convictions, often of the most serious crimes, were shown to be erroneous and led to their exoneration. Of those, uh, approximately 10 percent had actually pled guilty, pled guilty to things like homicide, pled guilty to things like rape, even though they had not committed those crimes and it was later proven definitively that they had not committed those crimes. But they couldn't take the chance of facing um, the death penalty or life imprisonment or otherwise very severe sentences if they went to trial and they lost. So it is a severe problem. How large a problem it is nationwide, no one knows for sure. It's really a realistic appreciation by these defendants of what their chances are. And the fact that they are innocent doesn't mean they're going to be acquitted. And the fact that they are innocent doesn't mean that they believe they are going to be acquitted, even if they will be. Um, and so the combination of those psychological pressures leads them to plead guilty. The, uh, the laws put a lot more power into the prosecutor's hands. And he's being told by his superiors, charge the most severe crimes you can that you have any chance of proving because um, the, uh, that will foster guilty pleas. And we have many more cases than we can deal with, so we need guilty pleas to dispose of them. In many state uh, courts uh, where the dockets are huge, um, the legal aid lawyer may meet his client five minutes before he cuts a deal with the prosecutor. And the prosecutor will be cutting 40 deals in one morning. Um, and so, and the judge will have to take pleas from 40 defendants, and those are going to be very um, attenuated allocutions. Um, so, uh, uh, after seeing this going on, even in my court, not to that extreme, but uh, to, in some disturbing ways, I began to look into the um, matter. I have to also say, uh, like every judge in this country, I was impacted by the Innocence Project because what the Innocence Project has shown beyond everything else is that our legal system is a lot less perfect than we always thought it was.